So Cliff Whitney here, and I'm with Jim Moore, my good buddy Jim Moore. Howdy. We just got back from Ceph down at, which is the Southeast Electric Flight Festival. It's the largest electric flight festival in the world, down in America's Georgia, and we were awarded the very prestigious best new product release of the year. And Ceph does this every year. It's kind of really cool. If you have a new product and you release it at the show, it's judged by all of the pilots that are there. Most years that could be 450, 500 pilots judged for this and this year we were very very excited that our new little KMR 250 racer was selected as the best new product. It's kind of cool isn't it? Yeah we kind of did this because we have so many people coming in the shop that they want to get into this but they have no idea where to start and it really does take quite a bit of research as a lot of you know um, to, to research motors and power distribution boards and what frames. So this is why we kind of did this. It, it's kind of cool. You know, and there's a lot of racers out there and most of them are in the 250 class. Some of the really small ones are down in the what, 180 class, yeah, something like that. So we approach this to make it easy for everybody to get in it. This is available in two different forms. One is a, an ARF and the second one to make it really easy, if you have Spectrum equipment, is a complete bind and fly ready unit. So what we kind of wanted to do today is give you a little bit of an open box tour, tell you about what's in the box if you decide you want to put it together by yourself. And then uh, we'll take it out back and uh, take it for a spin in a little bit. So let's, let's show them the, uh, what's in the box. I'll set the, uh, the full one over there. Open that and while you're doing that, uh, I'm going to put my spectacles on. So. We use the very popular Naze 32 board for the flight controller. That gives it all of its stability. These are the latest revisions um, of the Naze 32 board. It works really, really well. We developed our own racing motors. These are 2204, 2300 kV motors. They're under our twister line. The twister motors have been known for years and years. They're very high quality bearings, very, very good quality uh, motors. Of course, there's four of those. The motors are actually uh, indicated as counterclockwise and clockwise. So if you're building it, it makes it easy to put it on. Then a lot of the 250 class racers that are out there use um, CMOS cameras. And Jim and I decided early on that we wanted to use a CCD camera. A CCD camera has much better color. It has a very fast refresh rate and what it handles the differences in. Yeah, the big thing is when you're coming into sunlight or out of sunlight, with the CMOS cameras there'd be that delay and that could be maybe only a three or four second delay, but if you're doing 45 or 50 miles an hour, that's a long time. Shoot, three or four CCD, milliseconds makes yeah. a difference if you're going that kind CCD of speed. CCD so. transitions so much quicker. It's a lot easier to keep, especially when you're starting to fly low. So we were really, really happy to find these, these cameras. They work very well. And uh, as a uh, PDB board, and I'll tell you what, you've got one right there, so let's just yeah. pull the thing out. There's a little knife there. And while Jim's doing that, we also decided to use the new for the bind and fly version, the new dual diversity spectrum remote. You don't need a full size receiver on these things because the Naze is handling a lot of that. And the Naze plugs into the, the uh, remote receiver. Right. And this is the newest one with dual reverse or dual diversity. So you just bind to it and go. Yeah, it's it's kind of cool. One of the nicest things right there is that you bind to this directly. You don't have to bind to another receiver. And then like the old one was, is you can put it right on your copter and bind it and you're done. It's no very, big very receiver, that's it. One little cable going to the board, you're done. And they're only 60 bucks or something yeah. like that, 50 yeah, bucks. 50 or, or like that, 49 dollars, so. I believe. Very, very, very mm -hmm. cool. Now, for the flight controller board, this is where we, we really went all out because a lot of folks don't like doing millions of solder joints, you know, if you're building it yourself. Again, on the bind and fly version, it's all done for you. So as Jim untangles the little wires, what we've done is uh, it's, a, it's a very cool board. It's, it's very intricate. It has a lot of things on it. For instance, the 20 amp speed controllers are already soldered onto the board. And uh, they're nice and small. We went with 20 amps yep. instead of 15 to carry yeah. a little bit more load. This way here you can go from a three cell to a four cell. You can use five three props all the way up to five four three blade props if you feel like it. So all of the new a really HP props. Wide, yeah, all a really nice wide range of what you could do with this. You can start out nice slow at a three cell and work your way up from there. A couple other things that are on, you'll notice uh, up front we have all of the, this is a power distribution board. So you're going to solder the motors on, all four motors. And again, you don't have to do the speed controllers. They're already there. Our airframe has lights in the front and in the back. And as Jim's holding the board, I'll show you. 
The little LED lights are up on the front. They're very easy to solder in. They're two different colors. They're red and white. And what we did on the board is if you don't want to use the lights, there's a switch. So you can just turn the front lights on or the back lights on or off as you wish. Um, this is also a uh, power reduction board, a BEC if you will, so it takes the 12 volts, because if you're flying it on 3S, it takes the 12 volts down to 5 volts or down to uh, enough to run your, your video cameras. It has a lost model alarm, so if you were crashed it somewhere and the battery's starting to get a little bit low voltage, it starts screaming at you, which is, which is very which is cool. very handy, so you, I use that several times. Uh, I use it all the time because I crash You'll it a lot. You'll find them in the grass. What do the lights look like? Yeah, that's the light right there. Really Just small, really nice, very, bitty. very simple. Nothing to it. A little board, got a little tab to solder right to, very easy, and even says katana on the back. Right on the back. And you know, those lights are good if you're flipping it around a little bit. You gotta oh, know absolutely. what direction and is And even the rear lights, even if you're wearing goggles and you're flying with some buddies, you have those rear lights on so you can pick each other out. You can kind of see a guy in front of you. The other thing we did on the board that's kind of cool is we include a, uh, a battery voltage indicator. Now you can take it on or off if you want, but when the battery mounts up on the top, you can actually see the voltage in the pack. And if you'll plug the balance connector in, pick this one up, to the little red plug that's there, it actually cycles through and it shows you the voltage in each individual cell, which is, which yes. is kind of cool. And plus it's, it's uh, very bright and very loud when it gets to its low voltage cutoff, which is adjustable also. Then you can hear it and you can see it. It is, sure. it yeah, is very loud very and loud very bright. Loud. What about the airframe while well, I see if I can open this? Uh, the airframe is a uh, uh, H-type frame. It's a pretty typical type frame as you can see. You know, there's, there's so many different designs. Everybody's trying to do something different, but it's a nice little layout. It's solid layout. It's got very thick arms. It takes crashes well, which is going to be very important. I can testify to that. Yes, and I can too. Actually, first time I flew it, I crashed it. Um, my fault. It, we put a little landing gear on here. You don't have to put those on, but it does keep it up off the ground. If you're coming off a black top, if you're flying off a grass a lot, you could pull those off so it doesn't catch so you can land on it. Um, got nice aluminum standoffs, which your LEDs will lay against front and rear. Um, it's, uh, it's, just, it's a standard 250 type layout, but very good, uh, nice, you know, uh, top plate. Of course, the bottom plate is doubled up, or it looks doubled up. You have the bottom plate, and then your PDB board stands up off of that. The arms are in between the two, but a very nice We've done that layout. to make it stronger so you don't tear everything yeah, out. By the way, every single part is easily replaceable. We stock all the parts, yep. everything. We got, yeah, we the, even the, actually the speed controllers, which a lot of people, if you look at the board, you think, oh man, the speed controllers, but very easy to get to, very easy to remove, very easy to replace. There's uh, one other little board that we include in the ARF kit. Again, it's, it's all assembled in the bind and fly kit. It's a separate BEC. Now the board itself has a BEC on it, but the BEC on the board is designed for 3S. And frankly, if you're just learning to fly these things, or you want to get into FPV racing, fly it on 3S to start with. It's, it's very forgiving, it's easy, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't get away from you. But when you run it on 4S, we include this separate BEC because that'll take the higher voltage battery and convert it down to 12 volts and then we run the front camera off of it. So if, if you try to run a 12 volt camera on 5 volts, of course it's not going to do it. So we include this so you can go all the way up to a full 12 volts, yeah. which is uh, pretty handy. Yeah, well, other thing that's kind of a neat little feature too is on your camera, even though it's a board camera and some guys will say, I am, board cameras are fixed. This is not fixed. It actually has two screws in the top if you loosen the screws, you can slide the camera back and forth so you can change the angle so you can set your angle the way you like it, even though it's a board camera. You can definitely set the angle because the faster you go, once you move up to that four cell, you know you're going to want to kick it over and you're going to have to crank that camera up. So it is capable. It's kind of nice. Yes. And uh, hand me that knife. Now, Jim has done the cardinal sin at Atlanta Hobby. He's left the blade <laughs> out on the knife, so uh, you know I have to complain a little bit about that. It's but military most guy. people, I get a lot of emails asking about the table in our videos. This table top came out of the sewing industry and it enables you to take an X-Acto knife and just cut right on the table. It's a self-healing table. Notice I put the blade back in when I let go. That comes from experience. But inside of the main bag that, that comes with it, you have all of your standoffs and, uh, and then the little slider pieces for the video uh, camera adjustment Jim was just telling about. Of course the legs 
and uh, some little rubber grommets are in there and the various nuts and bolts. It's very, very complete. I've got the top and bottom plate in my hand aside from the PDB board. And you can see the thickness of the arms. So good and, good and sturdy. Take there, a hit. Yeah, they are. Again, you know, unless you're slamming that. it into concrete or brick, um, if you're flying over grass and that, you're going to break props. And yeah, that's <laughs> and if you're in concrete or brick, we've got spare parts. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, some extra little standoffs for mounting the secondary um, uh, BEC board and then the necessary cables. It comes with a lead for your uh, uh, a 1300 milliamp pack is what most guys are flying. We've sold it or flown it with a 2100. Mm -hmm. The 1300 High Sierra packs, the 3S or 4S, tend to work very, very well. But all the cables are included too, so yeah. it's kind of a cl complete little kit. Absolutely. It, it's, it's, it's really a nice. great way to get into it. If, if you're looking to try it, you want to try it, you want to build one, it's a great way to do it. We, we can sell them built or what we really and what I hope to see is more people actually building because you, you almost have to learn it at some point. Yeah, and it, it's easy. It's just it. a couple of couple yeah. of screws and the little wrenches work very well. By the way, on the bind and fly version, we're including an immersion RC 200 milliwatt race band mm -hmm. video transmitter, and it's mounted so back in the back. Right you can see Jim's right hand there. on it right there now, uh, and, and that's in the bind right and fly version. In the ARF version, you can get whatever video transmitter you want, be it 600 milliwatts, 225. All of that is uh, real handy. There's a, a separate accessory available. It's uh, about eight or nine dollars is all. I think it it uh, sets right up on the top of the front. It's custom built to hold your GoPro. Because remember, if you want to record your flight, you'll need something to record yes. on. So most folks are using a, a GoPro mounts up on front. GoPro works is. very very well. Balances mm -hmm. all out. Yep. And uh, so pretty cool. Yes, and it's just a it's a great way to get in. It takes all the guesswork out of it, and that's exactly what we were shooting I for. I think it, it is. It's uh, taken us about six months to come up with it, especially the PDB board and stuff. Yeah. So so I think we ought to take it out and take it for a spin, don't I, you? I think we should. Okay. Yeah. Are you going to fly it? You're going to no, fly it. I am. All right. I'll fly it. Okay, I'll fly it. Okay. We have a bunch of them built just in case I fly it, so <laughs> yeah. that's what happens. We have so. many backups. Yeah. It's very important. All right, let's take it out for a spin. All right, let's go.